Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk, man. Hey, listen, man. Make sure you guys like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys check us out, man, on all streaming platforms. Share our footage. Stop playing, man. It's going down, man. I got HHF in the building today, man. Pippin' Kid, what's up, man? Mr. Shine, what's up? Bado, what's up, baby? HHF, we out here, man. HHF. Can I get that HHF chat? HHF, there it is, man. Hey, man, how's everybody doing, man? Cool, man. Now you on Boss Talk One on One, man. The you right, on <laughs> the right place to be. I'm hey, back again, man. Hey, you back? This is oh, this was, I'm back again, <laughs> man. Africa in the building, man. Hey, man, you know, <laughs> hey, no matter what, man, a man, when you get caught, you know, in a situation where you gotta make sure you protect and want to make it home at night, y'all don't want me to really talk about it. Don't but freak. we trying to make it home at night. I got some young boys that I had on the show that don't even want, they don't even want hired security. They rather have their home because they think hired security ain't going to act in the way they should. It's so many different avenues that these guys are having to face when they're out here being entrepreneurs and, but put out a situation where they can't defend themselves. Let's just, let's just talk about that for a second before we start anything. They think security fake, they make it look fake, you got security. That's why they got the home, boy, make it think you look weak, you feel me? Oh, so if you have a, a security, they think it, they, they, they make they make you look weak. Yeah. So Hired security like, make you look weak. In the street, to the street rapper, yeah. To the street rappers. How they feel. But they feel like, you know, you get to a platinum level, they might get a little real security then. Probably don't be a shame, you feel me? But for it, on the come up, you got weak security, they feel like they ain't going to make it where they trying to be. Like everybody going to feel like they selling out, you feel me? So that's yeah. why they do it like that. Man. What's up, man? You know, you well, watch the game. Let me let me say this before you start, because I know you're going to give me the the, the the business, but you watched the game. You was in the uh, 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 Magic Stick video with 50 Cent. Right. The game was different back then, but still the same, dangerous and moving. Right. You was in you was in so many different videos with so many, with Outkast, all these different people. You watched hip hop elevate from what it was to what it is now. Right. Um, what is going on with, with protection and how should a person move nowadays in your so, opinion? So 50 Cent is the blueprint, right? So when I first met 50 Cent and uh, well not when I first met him when I went to the PIMP video and I did uh, I think I did five shows with him and I was traveling with him and Shaw Money and uh, Buck and uh, Banks and all of them at the time you know uh, 50 Cent had real police officers. He had real security guards, you know, people who were licensed to carry a gun. And 50 Cent said it in his album. He said, now I got me some money, I can hire me some help. And people didn't catch the hook. See, 50 Cent is one of the realest motherfuckers that ever played the game. Because you got to understand, the nigga was protecting the bag. Why have the little homie, why have Tony Yeo walk around with the rap or the strap? when you can have a police or a security guard that's licensed to carry so if this motherfucker kills somebody, he's a licensed killer. Yeah. So he don't fuck up the bag. Cause 50 Cent obviously must know the federal laws. And that's the problem a lot of people don't understand. When people say, Ken, man, every time you get in the car with me, you ask me do I got a gun because it's a federal law called the trigger lock. You know, everybody should Google it. The trigger lock means if I'm an ex-felon, I got more than two felons, I get caught with a pistol on me, even though the state catch me, the feds can come pick up the case. Because with the feds, you know what I'm saying, you can't beat the case because it's called constructive possession. Constructive possession is when Shine got a license to carry a gun, he my home or I ride with him, and the police pull us over, and they decide to be assholes, and they take us down to the precinct, and they find out that I'm an ex-felon, and if they put that into the database, then the feds can see that, and they can come and they can arrest me. That's what you see what happened with Boosie. So Boosie, the state case, he could have beat because he could have argued that it was the security guard's gun or the other guy's gun. But with the feds, if you're an ex-felon, it don't make a difference. You don't even supposed to be a gun, around a gun, period. And that's why a lot of young brothers is getting caught up because they don't understand that when you are uh, ex-felon and you got a gun, you know what I'm saying, or you're around a gun, like, so I'll give you a better example of that. If you and your girlfriend, you know, y'all laying up and your girl got a strap and you don't know she got a strap, you know what I'm saying? And she, she, uh, 
you know, she got the strap in, in, in the uh, in the closet. And the police come and do a domestic violence check. You know, y'all get into an argument. If they find a gun, you go into jail, even though it's her gun. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. So, but here's the issue with that. You know, Lil Wayne went to Rockers Island, right? For a gun. BG got 12 years for a gun, right? Uh, so, ja Rule so, so, went, went to jail for a gun. For a gun. So, so we know that this is happening, right? But what happens is these guys is getting $50,000 a show, Brother E. $50,000. They're getting $50,000 a show. And guess what they're doing? They're going to their dress room and they're strapping up. They're going out to their vehicles and they're strapped up. Guess what, man? If you get caught with that strap, your lawyer fee gonna be about fifty thousand. Your bill gonna be about a hundred thousand. All it costs you to hire a person with a strap or a security card would only been three hundred dollars. Wow, a hundred dollars an hour. Your concert might last three hours. You you hire security guards. You tell them, hey man, just follow me around until I get back to my hotel. And then your homeboy, you know what I'm saying? They can walk up and down the room. And then when you drive, it's easy to just buy you another vehicle about $10,000 a Yukon or something and have your homeboys follow you in that Yukon with the strap because if you get caught up with that strap and you making millions of dollars everything shut down so we have to be wise and we have to be intelligent and as young players we got to understand especially in this music industry that you understand me just because you made millions does not expunge your criminal record you're still a criminal you understand me don't let the money in the houses in the cars and all that shit fool you you're still subjected to the law. And the law said ignorance is no excuse of the law. And that's what happens with a lot of people. And, you know, we could look at thug situation. You know what I'm saying? Thug, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, ain't got nothing to do with these dudes. You know what I'm saying? He don't know what them dudes do in the street. This man traveling around the world getting hundreds of thousands of dollars a show. But they out there hustling. They out there game banging. They out there doing this and that and other. And under the RICO, because he's affiliated with them, they all got caught up, and now they're trying to point the finger at Thug. That's how the game go. You know what I'm saying? Once you get millions, you got to get out of that shit. I always say that your gift can take you where your character can't go. You can get out the ghetto, but you got to get the ghetto out of you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, can't, you, can't, you, you can't have a talent of Michael Jackson status or 50 Cent status or, or you know, uh, Eminem or Kanye or Shine status, and then you make it out the hood, but you still have a hood mentality. Because your gift will take you where your character can't go. Once you get the millions, your character got to match your gift. Oh. Point yeah. blank. You know wow. what I'm saying? Wow. Man, so, Sean, I wanted to just get, get in the, uh, you hadn't been on Boss Talk 101 before. Um, like, uh, just give us a little bit of your background so people will know who you are. So coming like from Alabama. Yeah, but I know when they see me, they call me, someone call me Bama before they know my name when I go to different city. But they know Mr. Shine too, so they were rapping for a while, man, coming up in the hood. Hood that, you know, everybody did street stuff, banging and slanging, you know, the typical street rapper. And just made a lot of moves, grind real hard, got my name up at home, and came to Atlanta, started grinding. I always had respect in the street, go to any hood, any club, anywhere, and do my thing, and still doing it to the day. You feel me? Everybody love my music, and got to put out some new music I'm finna drop, so. They wait on that too, so they finna just keep giving the street what they want. You feel me? How long? Uh, how did you end up on HHF? Man, just grinding out there, man, and running the key. And like I think we met at all. I think it was Ugly Money Summit, like last year. You know what I'm saying? We chopped it up, and then we just clicked like that. You feel me? And ever since then, we just clicked. I ain't no getting with HHF. You might later, so. Wow. Been doing pretty good, though. man. man. I love fun. Man, congrats, man, for everything, man. I'm going to be looking out for your music, Mr. Shine. Yeah, you got to go down, though. Got a song called Front, though, now. Okay. I'm stupid in the street, you know. Okay. So we're okay. performing tonight and tomorrow, so. Wow. Perform every week, you feel me? That's hard. That's yeah. hard staying busy. So, yeah. Bottle, man, we last time we spoke, we was up in uh, New Jersey at Ice Tea House, man. Yeah, man. Man, you, I, I, you, man, now you back down here and everything moving for you and shaking for you, and I know you got a lot going on. Just give us a little bit about, you know, just uh, hip hop fraternity and what's going on. I know you got the uh, the chapter over in Africa. Yes, like just give us a little insight on on, on what's going on with that chapter. Um, basically, no, uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Hip Hop Fraternity Africa, 
and also I'm the uh, national COO of Ripple Fraternity. So um, in Africa, you know, what we're trying to do now, what we're doing, you know, even trying to do what we're doing now, like uh, we're setting a foundation, like uh, Ken said earlier that, you know, uh, we're doing, we're working with artists, we're doing shows, you know, and then, you know, I'm studying Cameroon because that's where I'm from. So uh, we just uh, did a show last month, you know. We just try and, you know, just put our feet in the water, just see where it's going and this, uh, bring the vision to, uh, bring the vision of uh, HHF to Africa and globalize it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Man, and, and that's huge, man. That's a huge step, yeah. man. Uh, uh, Pimp again, like, like um, when, when you when you and Vado met, you know, like to see, uh that you guys are, are, are dealing with Africa, the chapter in Africa, and doing the things that you guys are doing on an extraordinary level. Like, um, th is this something that you foresee seen coming? Well, you know, a lot of times, you know, I try to explain to the brothers in the movement that you got foresight and insight, right? So what you see with Vado and with Shine, you see insight, you know what I mean? You know, he insightfully, you know, performs, you know what I mean? He's an artist, you know what I'm saying? He's, you know, from Alabama, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he, they love him in the street. You know, this brother's from Africa. He's a videographer, you know, he got insight. He got insight into the culture of Africa. But foresight is the vision. So the foresight is you see it before you see it, you know, before you be it. So you got to see it before you be it. So a lot of times when you see me moving, it's like me taking the staircase when I don't even see the stairs. I'm moving on faith. Everything you see is on faith. You know what I'm saying? I mean, our relationship has a lot to do with that faith. Had I not had faith, I wouldn't be able to be on Boss Talk as many times as I've been on man, Boss Talk. Been on you Boss know? Talk, man. You come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so you know, yes, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, God gave me the vision. You know, that's why I lock down. I talk about the, you know, when you build a, 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 a skyscraper, whenever you see these uh, condominiums going up, you know, it's an architecture. You know, an architect, you know what I'm saying? Architecture, it's somebody that's doing the architectural work on that building. So I had the architect hip hop fraternity in my mind. And I had to envision this, you know what I mean? But it was things that I went through that allowed me to be who I am today. You know, the good steps of a man are ordered by God. So it was, you know, me having a site, www.pippikin.net, before the hip hop fraternity.com show me how to create a social media. You know, it was the relationships that I had with Boosie and Ice-T that let me know that one day I would be on Boss Talk and Drink Champs and all this stuff, stuff, and I would be promote, promoting and pushing and propagating hip hop fraternity. So yes, everything is, is, is in the foresight. You know, it's foresight, it's, 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 it's hindsight, and it's uh, 2020, and it's like vision, right? So you know what I'm saying? I mean, everything else around that is insight. And so once, Shine, say, man, you know, I believe in your vision. I'm going to be the number one artist on your platform. I'm going to sell millions of records. When he believe that, he say that, then that's his foresight. He foresee himself being successful. When Vado say, man, right. you know, Ken, I'm going to join the hip hop fraternity, but I'm going to take it to Africa. You know what I'm saying? I mean, then that's him having insight and building on the foresight, which gives him foresight to foresee, you know, his future endeavors. Wow, man. Hey, man. So I, I know, you know, um, what does it do for like artists and people when you see, you know, how the law enforcement is, 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 is looking to try to catch you up and you trying to figure out a way how to move in these streets, man, and trying to keep yourself safe? Uh, you just got to, man, you got to really just stay focused for real. That's where the word focus come in at. Stay focused. You know, you'll learn how to move and remember how to move correctly. I mean, really, it come down to what you got. Is you on probation or parole? You got to start there first, you feel me? Then, if you ain't got on pro probation or parole, you got a better chance to talk to them pistols. Wow. You know so wow. That's how we so kept on about this. So, it's so, so, yeah, it's it's pretty much the same thing you said. Yeah. It's that you got you to gotta move with precision when yeah. it comes down to your, your well-being. But security is something that you have to take into consideration. Yeah. Um, luckily, I got people that you know, rock with me to where it's, 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 a, it's a thing where when I go to those places or do those things where yeah. I feel like that's the need, yeah. uh, my people call me today just to check in and all kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it, it's a thing where we have to we have to be smart about how we do things. But now. being a screen nigga make you, it throw you out though. You, yeah, but being a street nigga that's doing rap, that's getting money, yeah. need to sharpen up his senses and figure up. out how yeah. to make it right. Yeah. Because 
Yeah. Well, well, I'll give, I give a better example, you know, mm. as far as a street nigga, right? I didn't want pimp of the year, international pimp of the year, local pimp of the year. I didn't want every pimp trophy you can win, right? I'm the epitome of a street nigga. You know, I've been to penitentiary, you know, you know, shot niggas and, you know, niggas and shot me, I didn't shot back, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, been in wars, you know what I'm saying? Me, you know, hustle, so work, you know what I mean? Did all that, right? But at the same time, when I go in them corporate offices and shit, when I'm doing business, I put that street shit to the side yeah, because I, I'm official like a referee whistle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, the best they ever did, it got away with it, right? So I know I'm that man. You know what I'm saying? I'm that dude. You know what I'm saying? I know I live that life. So I don't have to perpetrate something that I know that I already mastered. So what I do is I try to, you know, learn the culture of the business and environment that I'm in. So every rapper should understand that, you know, they like bozo, they got a target on their back. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they bullseye. You know what I'm saying? Mean, and every law enforcement want to bring a rapper down. Because guess what? Every district attorney want to bring, you know, the person that locked Boosie up, they're going to end up probably running for Congress one day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, yeah. that's political. You know what I mean? Y'all become political pawns and tools in this criminal justice game. So knowing that they play a game, when the white man changed mm -hmm. his game, I changed mine too. When they said yeah, human, human trafficking, you know what I did? I said, bye, bitches. <laughs> bye, bitches. I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, yeah. I tell you, man, yeah. don't, don't too many dudes get chose with their mouth closed. I'm right. one of those dudes. Sure, I know women, you women know. to this day, at my age, beg me to fuck with them. Yeah, and, I I beg, and I beg them to move the fuck away from me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I understand that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, once you come into this game, you got to understand it's a game. And when you play a motherfucking game, whether it's the rap game, the pimp game, the hustle game, you got to understand that that motherfucking game got rules. Yeah. And if you don't understand the motherfucking rules, you're going to be consumed by the motherfucking game. Right. So you understand right. me? If the rule is, you know, catch a rapper, you mm -hmm. know, the gingerbread man, catch me if you can, then there's a slick nigga, street nigga, you like, hey, look here. You yeah. understand me? Since these motherfuckers playing like that, hey, my nigga, you understand me? Here go $50. Yeah. Hey, my nigga, here go $50. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me trail me. Hold you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Me, if he don't trail you, guess what? You gonna spend pay five six hundred dollars for a motherfucking lawyer? I mean five six hundred dollars for a bail? Yeah. If you and, and if they really want you, you gonna pay fifty thousand? You got to pay about ten thousand for a lawyer. Yeah. You got to go to the courthouse every other month. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me, it's gonna inconvenience you. You got to reschedule your shows mm -hmm. because guess what? You don't know the rules of the motherfucking yeah. game. Yeah. Every rapper should learn the motherfucking rules of the game. The rules is to catch a rapper slipping. Yeah, the the rules is to catch a rapper yeah. with a pistol. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why they got strict laws for pistols. It ain't yeah. because they just want to make strict laws for pistols because they know that every rapper want to be a street nigga. He want to yeah. be that tough nigga. Yeah. He want to be that bad nigga. He want to feel like, yeah, man, I'm from the streets. Yeah. Nigga, yeah, you from the streets, nigga, but I'm from the streets too. Like I said, you know, I'm Mr. Pimp Extraordinaire. Yeah. But just that me, I ain't been to jail in 33 years. Why you think that? Because when, hey, I back up off them motherfuckers like the old days and spin up off them motherfuckers like the bar case. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm out there motherfucking business. Yeah. You understand me? You know why I ask you when I get in the car with you. Hey, do you got a pistol? Yeah, the motherfucker on the planet that I don't actually they got a pistol because I yeah, know I that that trap and that game got a rule yeah. and the rule is to catch a motherfucker ex-convict with a pistol. Right. So, I mean, you got to know that this shit is real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? E, if yeah, you don't know right. that this shit is real, if you don't know that you're in a motherfucking game, then you're not in the game. Definitely. Hey man, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Life ain't what you get into that make you win. Life is what you don't get into that make you win. That's how you win. You 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 win by not getting caught up in the bullshit. True. You know what I'm saying? I got I got into a lot of shit, but it's a lot of shit I didn't get caught up into. It been a lot of times, man. Dudes like, man, come on, man, ride with us, Ken, man. We feel to go bust a move. We feel to go rob them niggas over there on the north yeah. side. And I be like, man, you know, I'm good. Throw up the bunny ears, the deuces. I'm straight, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Guess what? They riding down a motherfucking bird light, and they riding down a motherfucking strip, and they get pulled over because the, the tail light fucked up. Guess what happened? I ain't seen them niggas since. <laughs> you know, Dang, nigga, man, hey, nigga, nigga, come up to me. Hey, Ken, say, man, I got some birds, man. I got 10 keys, man. You understand me? This nigga ain't even got $10. How the fuck you get 10 keys? No, he's <laughs> You know what I'm saying? How the yeah. fuck you get 10 keys, nigga? Really? You got 10 keys? Hey, man, I tell a nigga, man, I'm good. Yeah. My partner say, yeah, man, let me get two of them. He get two of them. My other partner say, let me get two of them. Guess what they get? A motherfucking indictment. You understand know me? Because this nigga is an informant. 
You know what I'm saying? You must know the rules. Any motherfucker that come up to you trying to sell you a gun or try to sell you some drugs and he ain't known for that shit, run like you your life depend on it because that nigga is working for them yeah. people, man. Yeah. Anytime the police get behind you and follow you everywhere you go, that means that he's slipping, waiting on you to get caught slipping and waiting for you to get caught with a pistol, especially if you're a rapper. So yep. that's yep. what I say to the bullshit, man. That's what keeping it real. Keeping it real is not getting caught up. Right. You know, keeping it real is understanding the rules of the game. You understand me? Because guess what? You understand me? Once you go to jail, some nigga gonna fuck the shit out your bitch. Oh, you understand know yeah. me? They gonna stick about 12 <laughs> inches of dick up in your bitch. She gonna be swallowing dick and you gonna be on the motherfucking collect call and that nigga gonna be like, yeah, ooh, ooh, mama and jumping on you. They gonna do you. you go. Yeah. No, no, nah, nah, they, the they gonna do it. The niggas can't wait for you to fall so they can <laughs> fuck your bitch. You know what I'm saying? Nick can't wait till you fall so they can break in your house and take all your jewelry and take all your money. All that. You know, it never right. fell. Yeah, yeah. Those, so, those so that's <laughs> why, you know, rappers shouldn't carry guns. Yo. That's why rappers shouldn't have a bunch of drugs on them. What because I, yo. it's so much shit against you. You know, what I was saying was, my bad, brother, what I was mm -hmm. saying was, the street stuff throwing them off because they feel like they don't know when to get security too. That's what I was talking about. They be like, it's street, so they don't know when to go. They going to a barbecue, the neighborhood party. So they in the hood chilling. You feel like like, like they feel like I don't get no security, man. I'm in the hood. I'm finna go to my grandma's part or my cousin's part. They there, they popular, but they gonna go there with by themselves or their homeboy. You know what I'm talking about? So they might not have no security because they feel like I'm just in the hood chilling. I'm at the party. So what you saying is they just gonna say I'm just gonna go over and be slipping? Yeah, so yeah, they probably slip. I'm slipping, but because, see, yeah. but see that's not the way to think, Shad. No so yeah. so what, I'm what, talking what about I would, what a nigga do? But but not, but, not me. but look, this what a nigga do. This what a nigga do. If you gotta go to the barbecue. You can hide security, but you tell a nigga, yeah. man, stay over there. Yeah. And watch me from down. a distance. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. you know, you nigga ain't got to be walking around with you. Yeah. Hey man, look here, man. Just make sure one of these niggas don't get to acting crazy. Yeah. So if a nigga acting crazy, then them niggas they come out the woodwork. Yeah. Exactly. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and and the money that you gonna pay is way less than the bail money and way less than the lawyer money. Yeah. That's real. That's so real, man. Yeah. Man, uh Shine, how, how can people get a hold of you, Mr. Shine? They're trying to trying to reach out to you on IG. On the Instagram, yeah, Mr. Shine Yeah, Mr. Shine dot C C T on the IG. What about you, my guy Vado? Man, at Vado Films, you know, that's how you can reach me at um you know, HHF, the hip -hop com. You know, we all in there. We got a radio popping. You know, we got a lot of stuff going. Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man. Oh, man. So, man, like I said, I appreciate you guys for coming on the show, man. Uh, I know we'll be seeing each other again, man. You guys keep up the great work, man. Keep on doing what you're supposed to do to make sure you look good to our coach out here so we can have something to go by. You know what I'm saying? And don't forget about Boss Talk 101. If Boss you have Talk not subscribed, Talk, you the man. only one Boss missing Talk, out, man. nigga. <laughs> if you have not subscribed, nigga, you in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Shine, Mr. Shine. Man, we in that thing, man. HHF. Yeah. HHF. Yeah. HHF, man. Yeah. Check it, man. Like hey, Wait man. Up. Listen, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Yeah, hey, thank you for having us, man. Yes, All right. sir. So, so.